I would now like to call upon Ashish Garg, Senior Manager, Spectrum and Policy, South Asia and APAC, GSMA, to share his keynote, Mid-Band Spectrum to Augment 5G and Beyond. Ashish is the Senior Manager, Spectrum and Policy, South Asia for the GSMA. Prior to joining the GSMA, Ashish held various positions in the ICT sector, including with Reliance, Etisalat, Samsung Networks and industry associations, including telecom infrastructure providers. In these roles, he was responsible for delivering projects in spectrum management, digital infrastructure, broadband penetration, sectoral taxation, etc. Ashi specializes in the field of spectrum management and has a wealth of experience in managing and resolving complex issues such as spectrum refarming, harmonization, auctions and many more. May I invite Ashish on stage. So, good afternoon everyone. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers, Voice and Data and Cyber Media for getting all us together here and sharing our experiences and uh, opportunities for the sector. I'm going to present on uh, the uh, mid-band spectrum needs to augment 5G and beyond. Uh, let me just start with my presentation. Yeah, uh, don't worry, I'm not, I'm not going to explain all the numbers, even a relief for me as well. Uh, but just a brief uh, introduction about the organization I work with. Uh, GSMA is a global association uh, founded in 1987, almost 36 year old. Now uh, it started as a mobile industry body for uh, uh, mobile operators, uh, but as, as it stands today, it has 1100 plus members from uh, across the ecosystem, uh, out of which 700 plus are the mobile operators. It is also the uh, organizer for uh, for world's largest or biggest uh, tele technology event, which is Mobile World Congress, which takes place in Barcelona every year. And besides uh, MWC Barcelona, it also uh, hold various uh, various variants of MWC, I would say, uh, which is MWC Africa, MWC Las Vegas, and also uh, Shanghai. Then we also hold various events, uh, regional events uh, for Asia Pacific, Africa, Latin America, uh, and so on, uh, which are uh, known popularly known as Mobile 360 events. Yeah, before starting to talk about the spectrum needs, uh, uh, let us uh, just have a look at few numbers on 5G adoption global uh, as well as uh, uh, regional level. Uh, as of as on December 2022, almost 237 operators have launched 5G services in 91 markets. Uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, I think uh, most of us doesn't know that India was 88th country in the world to launch uh, 5G services last year in October. But as on December, uh, there were 91 markets which have already launched uh, 5G services. Now, if, if you look at the 5G adoption by 2030 as per the GSM intelligence forecast, uh, Asia uh, Pacific, uh, so uh, uh, APEC is estimated to lead the number of 5G corrections by 2030. Uh, although uh, the um, percentage wise, most of the adoption uh, will be uh, seen in North America and Europe. However, however, if we look at actual numbers, it will be the Asia Pacific, which is going to lead the way for the obvious reasons. Uh, and uh, with 3 billion 5G connections by 2030, uh, more than 50% of the world's 5G connection are going to be from Asia Pacific region. Uh, and if you talk about within the Asia Pacific region, uh, approximately 58% of total connection will be on 5G. If you talk about India, uh, 5G definitely is gaining grounds in India. As I already uh, spoke about India, despite being uh, 88th country in the world, almost four years after uh, after first 5G network launched uh, uh, in the world. So uh, it is catching up very fast with the world. First wave of 5G has already been completed last year in December when we reached 1, bil uh, 1 billion uh, 5G connections mark. Uh, and second wave has started, which will, which is going to be uh, led by emerging economies like India. So mobile operators in India has done a tremendous job with the rollout of 5G last year. Within a span of six months, they have already, uh, they have already covered all major cities in India and uh, uh, having a target of completing uh, 
pan india footprint uh, by end of this year Fi uh, not only the uh, citizens but 5g is also going to be a key enabler for enterprises digital transformation strategies and uh, the sectors which are going to be benefited most includes manufacturing retail uh, agriculture uh, uh, and ict uh, if if you look at the graph uh, we'll see how 5g is going to uh, gain grounds in india as per our forecast by 2030 40% of the mobile connection in india are going to be on 5g so this means that uh, out of total connect mobile connection in india 40% will be on 5g and 60% uh, will be uh, will still be on 4g so 4g and 5g are gonna coexist coexist till 2030 and even beyond that Uh, so what does it all need it definitely need uh, additional or more 5g spectrum to cater to this need for the mobile sector so now what all kind of spectrum is required for 5g to flourish uh, so there are three categories of spectrum one is low band spectrum then mid band spectrum and high band spectrum low band spectrum is uh, below 1 gigahertz mid band spectrum is from ranging from 1 to 7 gigahertz and then high band spectrum is 24 gigahertz and above so if you talk about sub 1 gigahertz band it so these are uh, this is um, known as digital dividend bands and uh, mostly used for uh, uh, filling the urban digital divide the, these bands are being used for legacy technologies uh, such as 4g uh, 3g and also now being used for 5g if you talk about low band spectrum it has the uh, capabilities of both uh, uh, low band and high band uh, like coverage and capacity both uh, and um, uh, again it is uh, we divided into two parts for uh, for the sake of simplicity low mid, mid band spectrum which is uh, uh, which is 1.8 gigahertz 2.6 gigahertz 2.1 gigahertz so they are being used for uh, for legacy technologies or the previous technologies like 4g uh, and uh, now being used for uh, 5g as well if you talk about our upper mid band spectrum it is these are the bands which are being used for 5g only now uh, 3.5 gigahertz band 4.8 gigahertz band and 6 gigahertz band. we will be talking about these bands slightly more uh, later on these are 5g only band then we talk about high band spectrum which is 24 gigahertz above these are high capacity spectrum and used for various uh, specific use cases and uh, uh, due to their prop propagation characteristics they are uh, the preferred bands for uh, dense urban areas let's talk about mid band spectrum uh, not only mid band spectrum so this chart uh, these charts actually shows how uh, each of these categories of band contributes to 5g definitely mid band spectrum is a hero if if you look at the charts starting from trials assignments and launches so mid band spectrum has been the preferred Uh, band for uh, for the 5g rollouts and if we uh, uh, if we talk about the future also we uh, we, we feel that mid band spectrum is going to take the lead so if we talk about low and high band spectrum uh, the trends at the at, at the phase of trials was that high band spectrum will be preferred over low band spectrum however, however as we move from trials to actual launches we have seen the trends have reversed now the low band spectrum have been preferred more because of uh, the uh, reasons such as the ecosystem and use cases so now low bands are preferred over high band spectrum but yes mid band spectrum uh, maintains the uh, maintains its role uh, as the key band for 5g launches and also uh, uh, it will be required uh, for future uh, needs of 5g if you talk up if you look at the chart on the right hand side uh, it again shows that uh, in the mid band spectrum 3.5 gigahertz band has been the preferred band most of the launches has been into this band and then uh, after 3.5 gigahertz band it is uh, 2.6 and 2.1 uh, which you can also call 2600 megahertz and 2100 megahertz band so one thing to be noted here is that these bands are not the new assignments uh, all are not the new assignments some uh some of uh, uh, the markets which have launched 5g services in these uh, uh, bands like 2.6 and 2.1 these are not from out of new assignments these are from the existing assignments but reformed for 5g use 
however we feel that for india it is it is not going to be the case because uh, as i shown earlier uh, by 2030 we will still have a significant uh, uh, proportion of 4g connection so uh, the spectrum needs for 4g will remain there so it will be difficult to reform these spectrum bands for 5g uh, and uh, we will require additional spectrum uh, for uh, 5g needs 5G as a te technology also uh, create a large economic impact. So as per as per GSM intelligence uh, estimates, 5G will generate an additional 960 billion uh, dollar in global GDP by 2030. So this is a huge number, uh, uh, huge number from a single technology itself. Out of this total contribution of 961 billion dollar, uh, 63 percent. Contribution uh, will be only from the midband spectrum. Uh, it will account for 65% uh, or 63%, which is almost 600 billion US dollar. So how uh, so it will? So this economic impact will mainly be driven by uh, uh, driven by the fact that as many as people uh, have access to fastest 5G as possible. So how it is possible? Uh, if uh, adequate or new spectrum bands, uh, especially in the mid band, because they contribute uh, uh, largely into into this uh, economic impact, so uh, more and more mid band spectrum or new bands will be required for uh, to uh, you know create this impact. What if this uh, additional spectrum is not uh, made available by the government to mobile operators? So we. Uh, so we estimate that uh, that 40 percent of these uh, expected benefits of 5G to the economy will be lost if no additional midband spectrum is allocated. So why we say that you know only midband spectrum because again it has the largest contribution in the uh, economy out of all these three bands. One of the reasons why midband it has the characteristics of both low and high band. Right. So then the question is how much midband spectrum is required so we have uh, so at gsma inter, inter, intelligence we have done the study we started this study in 2021 last year in 2022 we came out with with the results and we estimated that 2 gigahertz of midband spectrum uh, will be required by each market by 2030 we have considered all uh, we have studied 37 countries including india uh, this study covers all low, middle and high income countries and in dense, ur uh, dense uh, urban areas with low fiber penetration, uh, the needs, uh, 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 so on an average we have found that uh, 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 2 gigahertz of midband spectrum uh, will be required to uh, cater to the needs of 5G and uh, uh, future uh, 5G. So uh, what if... Uh, so interestingly, some of the uh, some of the markets had already accounted for this uh, amount of need in their national spectrum roadmap. So these markets were uh, actually the early adopters. However, uh, in countries like India, we are working with the Department of Telecommunications and the regulator to make this spectrum available. So now, uh, how do we achieve this target of two gigahertz in midband spectrum? So if we look at the bottom of the slide uh, there are various options uh, in midband uh, which uh, are uh, which can be made available for 5g's uh, on the left hand side there are various bands which are actually in in uh, use uh, already for 4g uh, providing 4g services in the country and elsewhere also in some of the places they have been reformed for 5g but not everywhere and so also uh, looking at the simple math it is very clear that this uh, 22 gigahertz requirement cannot be fulfilled uh, without access to 6 gigahertz band for 5g or imt you know because the other bands which are potential bands are 3.5 gigahertz and 4.8 giga, gigahertz band if you talk about 4.8 gigahertz band, uh, the reality in India is that uh, it is only 190 megahertz and out of this 190 megahertz also we don't, we have the incumbent users and it is not possible to make this band available for IMT. Uh, if you talk about 3.5 gigahertz band, then there are two parts of 3.5 upper and lower, lower 3.5 gigahertz band is already auctioned last year, which, uh, uh, which ha has already been used for rollout of 5G services. Uh, however, uh, the upper 3.5 gigahertz band, uh, due to uh, various interministerial issues and existing uh, users, 
uh, we feel that it will again be difficult to make this spectrum available. So we are left only with 6 gigahertz band spectrum uh, to achieve this 2 gigahertz need for in the, in the mid band. So that is why we get to hear uh, more often from the mobile industry, uh, you know, that we access, uh, we need access to or uh, more six, more bit band spectrum, especially in six gigahertz band. And why six gigahertz band? Uh, because it is the largest remaining single block of spectrum, almost 1200 megahertz, ranging from uh, 5925 megahertz till 7125 megahertz. Secondly, uh, with the use of 6 gigahertz band, uh, we can see faster and cost effective 5G rollouts. Why? Uh, because of the similar characteristics, it's uh, it share with 3.5 gigahertz band, which is already rolled out for 5G service, uh, used for uh, rolling out of 5G services. So, same infrastructure, same cell sites can be used while rolling out 6 gigahertz band. Right? So, the rollout will be faster and also the cost effective, affordable. Now, uh, there are various use cases that this midband spectrum offers like FWA, uh, EMBB, which is mobile broadband. And also it is already allocated by ITU, uh, as a process of ITU, it is already allocated for mobile services on prim primary basis. So for administrations, it is not difficult to, uh, you know, identify it for IMT and start making assignments for it. Further, this band, part of this band, you know, the upper 6 gigahertz band is already a part of WRC 23 discussion, although it is for region 1, however, uh, you know, all administrations can register their intent to make this spectrum available for IMT uh, uh, because, uh, uh, because of, uh, you know, the benefits from global harm harmonization and uh, economies of scale. So, so out, uh, this is again outlook for the 6 gigahertz band. So, we keep uh, hearing, uh, the, you know, the eco ecosystem for 6 gigahertz band is not available. However, this is not the case. So, uh, once this uh, spectrum is identified for IMT, definitely it will give a boost to uh, uh, the ecosystem development, device manufacturers and equipment makers. However, there is already an intent, clear intent from uh, mobile operators as well as device and infrastructure providers. Uh, or equipment providers to uh, you know develop uh, uh, develop uh, ecosystem into this band. Uh, secondly, you know there there is no technical barrier. So already there is a th 3GPP release 17 which uh, talks about the band plan in this band. So uh, this blam so there is no uh, technical hurdle uh, in uh, developing ecosystem into this band and also using this band for IMT. Uh, it's not that only GSMA or some of the, uh, you know, industry bodies are saying this. We have already done a survey from for, for mobile industry and uh, uh, it is evident from the results which are shown on the screen that uh, mobile industry desires 6 gigahertz band. They understand or acknowledge the importance of 6 gigahertz band. Uh, uh, if you talk about the time frame, uh, they expect it to be made available uh, 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 2025 or they, they want to start rolling out 6 gigahertz band from 2025 onwards uh, because by that, uh, by that time, uh, you know, they will be completing their rollout and also uh, uh, the uh, existing assignments uh, will be exhausted and uh, in the future traffic needs, uh, for the future traffic needs, they will need uh, additional spectrum. They have also uh, preferred a few use cases for uh, these bands, uh, which are uh, FWA and EMBB, which I have already explained in the previous slide. So, just summarizing about the mid-band spectrum and the need for 6 gigahertz band for 5G. Mid-band is the preferred choice, undoubtedly, for 5G rollouts and also future expansion due to the ecosystem during 2025 and 2030 time frame, so uh, end, of, uh, end of this decade, uh, we need total 2 gigahertz of midband spectrum, which is not possible without the uh, availability of 6 gigahertz band for mobile industry. Then uh, WRC 23, which is going to take place at the end of this year uh, uh, in uh, November, uh, in Dubai, uh, it is going to play a very important role in identification of this band, although for reason 1, however, uh, we expect a larger support from uh, region 2 and region 3, including India for this band for IMT. 
and then uh, definitely uh, an early decision by uh, the government to uh, identify this band for IMT and making it available for uh, uh, assignment uh, for mobile services or IMT will help in better network planning, lower capex and also uh, drive affordable consumer broadband. That is all from my side. Happy to take any questions now or later on. Thank you so much.